Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're here with Luke. Um, so you're known, I mean, I guess you're best known for, I would say, Ioma 68, or what would you say? Uh, yeah, well, originally for the uh, reverse engineering, I did that back on, in, on for Samba, um, the Wendy and T domains uh, uh-huh. uh, reverse engineering. That was 1996. Um the the reason I did that was to correct a social and economic uh, 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 imbalance mm-hmm. um, uh, that I perceived was seen because you were getting the Windows world going one way and the Unix world going the other. Mm. Um, and how so, did you address it? Um, uh, you could um, uh, uh, connect a Windows NT or a Windows uh, ninety five box to a Samba server without needing uh, an ultra expensive Microsoft license fee for the servers. Mm-hmm. All right, um, and corresponding the other way round, you could actually con- you, you know, I, I think so. It, it, it's uh, there was a, a you know a, a world that you know, um, was getting um, uh, dangerously polarized. Yeah, um, indeed. Sort of thing. So, so that's the sort of thing. That's a, a bit about what I what I do. I, I don't just go over things for the money. I I I, um, I uh, will identify socio and economic um, imbalances and specifically. Um, target things for, for um, you know, uh, to choose, choose what to do based on that. Yeah, and that's that's why we're getting along because that's you know, an ethical approach of creating an open source economy of really saying, okay, well, some some of these things are just not right, and we gotta, you know, somebody's yeah. got to stand up to work on them, right? Yep, like yeah. you said, with the M68 thing, um, that was um, because uh, the, it's not just the right to repair; it's all the right to repair, design, distribute, manufacture, oh, repurpose. Yeah the whole the whole lot um by splitting the actual computer card from the um i think so instead of a memory card it's a huh. computer card yeah, and you yeah, just yeah. share those or share the the things um etc et yeah, et yeah that's the, awesome. all those kinds of things yeah. let's dive into the vehicle so so yeah. so the new startup you're, you're doing that's when do you think you have you're going to work on a prototype of the car the physical prototyping and how can we get involved how do we collaborate on that because that's up our alley Cool. Um, um, the uh, uh, I've got no, it's design. I'll come showing pointed at my laptop at the moment. Um, that's. I'm sorry. I've, I've, I wasn't expecting this. So can you see that? Yeah, yeah. I can see it. Um, so that is. Uh, uh, well, that, that's what I've been doing. Um, we have some business partners who. Um, uh, uh, um, I will be doing um, two and three wheel vehicles, but I want to make sure that the four wheel ones weren't left out. Um, uh, and that, you know, there's different business focuses, and it will be market orientated. So if people want this, you know, this, this stuff, I'll go. But um, uh, long story, have you heard of um, uh, the Kestrel hemp hemp car? No, hemp electric haven't. car. Haven't. Uh, that was designed by um, Mason Armstrong um, um, 10, 12 years ago. Um, and um, basically what he wanted to do was to uh, reintroduce the concept that Henry, Henry Ford's um, hemp uh, uh, plastic car um, in using modern materials and techniques. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, unfortunately, it take, didn't, take, didn't take off. Um, it was around the time of the Aptera 2E. I don't know if you heard that as well. Uh, heard of it. Don't know too much about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's around oh, the yeah. same time. But of course, now yeah. batteries and Tesla and blah, blah, blah. Everybody's got the, 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 the concept now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, um, uh, uh, I, I love doing this stuff. I've been wanting to do an um, uh, electric vehicle for a, a long, long time. I've made two failed attempts to do so already. Mm, okay. <laughs> um, uh, so th- this one, um, um, greatly reduced materials, greatly reduced cost. Um, uh, I can drop these designs from onto, onto the website, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, onto the Open Source Ecology uh, Wiki, and we can post, post some links on that. Do you have any... Uh current plans to actually build out the prototype or that's you haven't made any plans for that yet uh i i haven't um uh because i'm i've got i've got so much else to do i've got the you know this campaign to crowdfunding campaign to do with um with tesnik uh, for um a a honda cub upgrade um turning a honda cub into an electric vehicle um that's using the drive chain of a saron saron um um uh e-bike it's mm-hmm. awesome. If you if you ever if you think they are no, no quite I haven't. But I, want, I want to get into that. That's oh, awesome stuff. Yes, yeah. We've got one out to 120 kilometers an hour. Wow. Okay. <laughs> On a bike that only weighs 50 kilos, 110 pounds. Wow. It's just wah, wah, 
It's great. It's wow. in the Jaffa experience. So, um, it, it uses e uh, electric mountain bike downhill parts, mm -hmm. uh, which is why it's so light. Yeah. So um, the idea is to use those exact same parts, at mountain hill, downhill bikes, and this motor. It's an axial flux motor. It's a three kilowatt, nominal three kilowatt, but lots of people have had it up to 13 kilowatts. Axial flux motor? Really? Yes. Um, <laughs> Is that open source in any way? Um, it, uh, the concept is, um, it, I don't honestly know if it's patented, but it's been, it's been commonly around. The first time I saw an, an axial flux, flux motor, it was actually a two-phase one that needed a two-phase sine wave controller. That was, it was back in, it was a German guy, and it was back in 2002. Mm -hmm. So if there are any patents, they've probably expired by now. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And basically, the electromagnets um, in a normal magnet, the a normal motor, you have the electromagnets in the center and the permanent magnets in a ring around the outside. Of course, the moment the the, the torque, the moment of inertia, is about the center, um, I think, and you have these really awkward fields. The the field strength changes because on the outside it's 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 wider and then it narrows in. Yeah, and it's a pain in the ass designing the uh, the materials designed for the laminates laminations for those uh, things is a pain in the ass. Mm. I, an axial flux motor, the the electromagnets are parallel to the axis. The direction of the electromagnets is parallel to the axis, and they go around in a circle. And the magnetic field goes sideways. You can Google it, actual flux motor, oh, and you find it. quite familiar. So, Michelle, let me just send you this link so you know what we're talking about. But we made a, we did a partial prototype of an ax, 3D printed axial flux. Uh, sorry, a, no, uh, along the axis, axial flux motor. Axis, that, yeah. That's what we're talking about here, right? Axial flux. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Uh, let me just show you this link because this so, is actually yeah, pretty cool. Um, let me go to Michelle's log. October. Yeah, I mean the power yeah, to weight ratio is just phenomenal. It's you know, you're getting sort of uh, ninety ninety five percent uh, or higher efficiencies. Um, that that surround motor oh, is wow. eight kilos. <laughs> that that uh, that surround motor is eight kilos, and it will handle. Before burning out, it will handle 13 point, 13, uh, 12 point eight kilowatts. Take a look at the link. Can you take a look at the link I sent you? That's Michel That's with thing. his uh, web open source WebGL. You can uh, explode that. But that's what we have designed. And he was doing initial tests, but he, he found it pretty hard to build. So we were kind of revisiting where to go from here. But this is awesome yeah. coincidence that you're, you're working on... <laughs> axial flux i can't believe it because that is apparently the more efficient easier to build technology right i mean yeah be easier to build um, you just what well, i mean you can do your own i haven't got it yet so we're going to leave it for a few minutes you basically you can get yourself some electromagnets and wind them yourself and you get uh, some discs and you put permanent magnets around it north yeah. south north south north south and on the other one south north south north get them to spin round and put the electromagnets in the middle and you're done yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah. i mean the simplicity it's, it's, is yeah the concept yeah. is extremely simple yeah and then there's some tricks to do that like we were actually going for a 3d printed version of that um yeah stuff like that but but yeah 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 awesome mm -hmm. the we also covered in our email the um lrk talk max design um, which is worth mentioning because um, to people or so sort of thing because um, if you Google that LRK Talk Max, what they did was the, um, the number of you you take the number of electromagnetic poles and you add one and that you make the, that the, the 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 number of permanent magnet poles one more than the electromagnet poles and what happens is that as the as the and there's a diagram with a GIF, um, animated GIF yeah, on the thing. Yeah, as, yeah. The, mm -hmm. as the electromagnet moves, um, it only moves the permanent magnets by one over number of electromagnets minus the number of permanent magnets. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like a stepper motor? Like a stepper yes. motor? Yes. 
So it's got higher torque. Uh, this is kind of like I see four times eight, four to eight times higher torque. That's that's it. But basically, in the in the animated gift there, he mm -hmm. does. Yeah, I see it. Twelve, twelve electromagnets and fourteen permanent magnets, and so the torque multiplier is um, one seventh, uh, one uh, one seven, seven, uh, seven times higher. It's seven times torque multiplication, oh, wow. so, but also a seven times speed slowing down. It slows down the speed of the, the thing. You ha if you want to make it go at the, quotes normal, quote, speeds, you uh -huh. have to m rotate the so, field. The sine wave controller has to go at seven times what you would normally how you expect. Get, how do you get that huge power like a torque motor, like a, like a stepper? I don't think that happens here. Here you're just activating two other electromagnets at a time out of the many? It's a it's a three phase sine wave control. It's a standard three phase brushless DC three um, uh, uh, three phase. Uh huh. And then you, uh, but you're not, activating. It's not a two phase. Are you activating like I'm seeing the animated GIF here? Are you animating two of the electromagnets at a time out of the whatever fourteen? Uh, all three using the standard sine wave the standard sine wave controller for a brushless DC motor three phase brushless DC. Okay, because I'm seeing like at any given point in time, only two are highlighted here. Yeah, he simplified the diagram greatly. That will be um, uh -huh. uh, uh, just just full on power oh, um, wow. thing, but you would actually need a proper pulse pulse width modulated PWM modulated um, oh, uh, three, fra God. three phrase brushes DC BLDC um, uh, controller. With the you do um, it's YUV or uh, yeah, uh -huh. white a white. Uh, yeah, interesting. Um, though, though more complex to build, though. Like, so, so which would you go with? Would you go with the LRK or with the axial flux? A, a combination of both. I would like to. I would like to do one where you take the axial flux design uh -huh. and you add one more extra permanent magnet oh, my in exactly goodness. the same thing. So you combine the two. Uh huh. Oh my goodness, this is kind of dangerous because it actually seems like you know what you're talking about. Mm hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> now, now no, here's a nice thing: is for that drill, it would actually be very, be very easy to do um, the drill concept. It would actually be very easy to do. You're talking about a, an incentive um, challenge for the drill. Yeah. Well, instead of having a gearbox, uh -huh. what you could do is use the axial <laughs> um, LRP, the combination of things. And if you wanted a seven to one gear ratio, gear reduction Holy ratio. Cow. You just do the 12, 12 electromagnets and the 14 permanent magnets, just like in that thing. And you don't need a gearbox. Wow. That's insane. Right? Well, can we make a pretty small form factor for yeah. a drill? Yeah. But the only thing is, bear in mind, uh, you'd need to get 12 tiny electromagnets into that space. Mm -hmm. All right. Plus, um, you would need a brushless DC motor controller and they do exist i yeah. know um i've seen people who've got them you know it, you know you're looking about 250 watt um, no only about 20 watts or 20 25 30 watts or something like that and those controllers um, are yeah. how i mean for example the vesk project right has an open source version right yes they do um that one is a two kilowatt um uh, the one that the, this is commonly uh, known of that's got the designs online is a two kilowatt one which is complete overkill for for a for a drill, yeah, yeah, um, that the Vesk the Veda Veda um, Vesk one is uh, I think it's like a four inch by four inch uh, PCB mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. Whereas for this you are, you don't need um, you might even be able to get away with a single chip that has the MOSFETs built in or something. And but there's there's almost certainly going to be something because the you're looking at um, eighteen volts. Yeah. Times. Yeah. Uh, maximum 15 amps or 180 watts so peak peak about 300 watts and you'll be okay mm -hmm. so that's that's nothing that's nowhere near the two 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 to three kilowatts that the vesk thing does but it's a, it's a prototype if you've got hand kicking around you could actually try it out just for god's sake <laughs> run the power a bit a bit lower than uh than what it's supposed to mm -hmm. um deliver yeah. than what the vesk is waiting for so what are our next steps on um on the car project i mean how do we go forward here um uh i i should publish the the designs and put a put up a, a website up. i've been working on it privately so i haven't done make upload to a git repository 
um, place where people could actually check it out. Yeah, um, just, just to uh, emphasize what this thing is about. So what are we talking about? We were talking about, do we say 50 kilos for the over, overall weight of the frame? Uh, 100. Um, let me just uh, get the specs. Um, what, it's, what I'm doing is, um, uh, Hank, can I just put that on the yeah. corner there? Yeah, yeah. Um, someone see it. Uh-huh. Um, I just go put it down and put the things. Uh, um, <laughs> man, this is visible this is false. Mm, no, I'd want to see the central air box. I want to see the front section. Um, wheels. I want to see the rear bumper. Let's see the rear section. That probably do the trick. Yeah, there we go. Right. Oh God, it's slow. Really trashing my poor little computer. Um, okay, so uh, those blue poles mm. are one meter lengths. Okay. So you can see that the height of the whole thing is um, the actual chassis is. Uh, uh, 1.1 meters high, only 1.1 meters high, um, uh, wow. by 3.2 meters long. So 1, 2, 3.2, 2, 3. 2. Uh -huh. um, and, and only 1.5 meters, meters wide. wide. Yeah. Um, and it's, there's an air box right down the center, so the airflow goes through. So it's basically a, a twin, twin hull catamaran in effect, mm -hmm. um, with one <laughs> sitting on the left and one on the right. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then your like your hot rod letterbox um, uh, windscreen, which I've put at about a forty-five degree angle. So, so it's quite a small is, windscreen. This is like super tight to the ground. Yeah, one meter. Yeah. I mean that's, um, that's it, tiny. It, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it is, um, and that's to keep the air, uh, wind resistance down. Um, so um, uh, the reason for going for hundred kilos is because if you've got um, the the we we learned from the so the Saron that that's a fifty kilo. Um, electric mountain bike that just happens to have a axial flux motor that will take it from 0 to 60 in three seconds. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> it's 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 exhilarating and scary as hell at the same time. Um, so we know that those components will cope with that kind of weight um, using Shimano uh, Saint M820 brakes, hydraulic brakes oh, wow. from an electric mountain downhill mountain bike that you can get off the shelf 19 inch rims from a mountain bike mm -hmm. um shinko 2.75 uh, 19 inch uh tires for um a motorcycle um uh, they're trail tires um uh vented uh, calipers disc brakes all this thing and we don't have to worry about and then the rear suspension from a sarong Mm -hmm. um, with the motor and the full drive train and the thing. And that way, um, you can meet a hundred kilo target because the, the actual frame when 3d printed, um, is only about 35 kilos. So, um, as you said, you know, 35 kilos worth of frame, about 10 kilos worth of Dacron, um, and, uh, Kevlar twine. If, if from the GA boats, um, concept for the canoe, the geodesic canoe. So if you Google geoboats geodesic canoe, you'll find the website site describing how that's done. Um, then um, about 20 kilos worth of wheels and suspension and steering wheel, um, 10 kilos worth of glass, um, and you're looking at about like um, the air air aerolite. Hang on, let me have a look. Yeah, yeah got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that boat is incredible. Um, GA boats. Uh -huh. The guy, he's basically, it's four kilos worth of boat oh, that's man. capable of supporting a 75, the weight of a 75 kilo person. Wow. wow. And the actual boat itself oh. is eight feet, eight feet long. Wow. <laughs> a four kilo boat with an eight, with its, it's eight foot long is incredible. Yeah, no, incredible. Incredible. That's, that's, that's good <laughs> yeah so he he basically used the techniques used from the biplanes of the of the, of the uh, early 1900s <laughs> mm. 
and just upgraded to modern materials. Wow, very cool. So what the heck? Use the same thing. Keep you know, keep the weight down, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It means it's easy for one, it's easy for people to make themselves and repair. He's got all the procedures and how to do it uh -huh. on on his website. He's fully documented how to make these canoes. Yeah, wow. So all you need to do is just adapt the um, the build procedures um, uh, 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 and and do the same thing with the for the skin of a car or any vehicle that you want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do you get in and out of this one? Is it uh, pretty easy? Uh, the car, it, well, apart from the fact that it's low onto the gr low to the ground, yes, it's a standard door. A standard door? On yeah. Side? Yeah. Let me. Sorry, I was just going. Um, I was going to put the thing on the side again, and I'll. Where's the door and things? It's all door sill, door angle, put it at 30 degrees, switch off the invisibility, run the generating again. There we go. Can you see that? Oh, wow. In red, in red down at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. So just a, a standard door frame. I haven't done. I'm I'm in the middle of organizing the the door parts. Yeah. So when um, you you show the frame, now once it's covered, it's gonna look decent, or is it gonna look like uh, it's got a lot of sections? Is it gonna be smoothed um, out at the end, or pretty much kind of like uh, the sectioned look? Um, well, f f from that geodesic thing, mm -hmm. you, the wooden, the wooden st st struts, you can curve them. So you'll end up with something that looks curved that you'll, you won't know that underneath it's a space frame. Okay. Unless you want, unless you want to, because <laughs> okay. it's kind of cool yeah. <laughs> and Mad Max like. Yeah, and have you have you considered what it? takes to make the space space frame itself the geodesic actually with curved members or that doesn't make any sense um for simplicity not not at this point but there's certain points where it's it's just awkward um uh uh have you seen have you heard of the hack rod ah -uh. oh, it's awesome um uh the guys there they used uh, they used they they just oh, yeah. they they used an AI um, to huh. redesign the frame with 3D printed metal, um, but they used AI to m get a, a, a crude uh, space frame shape, uh -huh. and the AI reduced it down to smaller um, 3D spaces between gaps between the thing, and ended up with a way lighter frame. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very cool idea, but um complex are they producing this or is this just a concept or it's a concept they've they've re apparently they've released the software or something like it they worked with uh you know, you know uh, I, 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 at some point i've got to go look it up and investigate but um it's that um proprietary software they were really proud of the fact that it was they did it in virtual reality and everything it was the first car developed in virtual reality whoa um so it has a space frame smooth. with a smooth frame out, smooth skin outside. Um, yes, well, that was a, a additional panels on the outside. Yeah, so basically the same concept. It's exactly the same concept as Kevin from the Blade from uh, Divergent 3D. Um, if you've seen that, it's uh, there's a Jay Leno uh, YouTube video on it. Jay Leno's Garage Divergent 3D. Um, it's a 650 horsepower hypercar where the the carbon fiber frame with pipes and then aluminium 3d printed nodes that only weighs 30 kilos and it takes 30 minutes to assemble with the savings rates oh off. holy cow so all this kind of stuff is uh, it's been done in various places it's like we yes it has yeah. <laughs> wow so all of this stuff i'm just throwing together ideas that have already been done and just sort of more of a sort of an integration uh, exercise than anything else yeah Awesome. <laughs> uh, we should probably run a steam camp on this topic, shouldn't we? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Talking about the steam camps, because uh, I know we can talk for hours on on this, but I gotta yeah. get some work done as well. Are you gonna yeah, yeah. show up to? Are you able to show up to Texas? 
Uh, yeah, can do. Um, uh, I, I, I've got to speak to my uh, partner Marie, who's managing the flights and things, because we've already booked the flight back on January the 22nd on China Airlines, and we have to change that and book another flight from where I'm in in Toronto to Texas, and then do something weird like uh, get back to Toronto and then go to yeah. And Would access yeah, to a plane ticket enable this? Sorry? Would access to a plane ticket enable your participation? Uh, um, uh, it, it, it would, it would, it would help certainly. Um, uh, we've got to, I've got to change the existing one because I'm January twenty second. I'm supposed to be flying back to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So that, um, and the flights at the moment are, uh, uh, um, uh, it's very, very busy. Uh, Practical details. We're going to talk to my partner and, and work it and work it out. Um, um, but, because uh, here's the willing, yes. here's the concept. When I was thinking about the, I was wondering if you could do this. But for the the steam cap itself, the first day is we we build the D3D Universal 3D printer, and I yeah. actually today it occurred to me it's like okay, well we actually need to offer just the first day where you if you I mean not a lot of people are going to have nine days. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, let's yeah. just offer the one or two day weekend option. And I was thinking That's for the first right, day, yeah. do the 3D printer, but on the second day, like, I don't want to get the people throughout the whole program, but I, I was thinking, what if we do a prototyping day on a second day with the people who come just for the printer experience, and we build a uh, scaled up version of the D3D Universal, so instead of a 6x6, we do a 12x12. Ooh. And I was going to ask you if you can run that on the second day, because we're going to be totally decked with the other stuff that we're doing. But if we had some extra manpower, and that could actually be remote. If you can do ah. that remote, because you, I think you know how to build 3D printers. Uh, uh, yes. Design them, design extruders, so you've got some experience. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm on to my fourth now. Excellent. Um, but um, would you be able to do that, like, at least remotely? Yeah, uh, yeah I should be able to. Um, now, um Yes. Now, Let does, me check does that dates. sound like what? What do you think about it? Because the second program goes into like now we're taking the three D printer that we built. We learn to print things. We actually do the little CNC mill edition. So there's that whole oh, program going. Nice. Um, but that kind of gets you into the full program. Otherwise, but I'm thinking just restrict this. Okay, this is this nice little package. You got the three D printer experience. You can still do a little redesign. You make this larger printer yeah. that if you want, you can also take home with you. Actually, so we'll make that option available. Uh, does that make sense to you, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, to me, it makes sense. It's like okay, we're we're doing this small weekend tracks because I mean, a lot of people are just not gonna have the nine days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I I want I need to I need to check dates and confirm on that, and I'll we'll talk about uh, uh, talking another uh, another time. Um, is uh, yeah, yes. Awesome. If nothing else, we'll yeah, so let's let's yeah. uh, talk. About, what do you think you can uh, figure out the do the 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 details the logistics? Uh, is that can you do that in like next day or two or? Um, uh, or how long? Uh, uh, hypothetically, yes. If I if I was saying, I'll send a message to my, my partner um, uh, 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 um, uh, and get a term. Uh, look, 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 uh, thing. Um, uh, uh, she she does like to um, find the um, best and cheapest prices, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, bless her. Um, um, so um, uh, made up. Everything. We actually have to call China Airlines to, uh, to 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 change the ticket. These not to, can't do it by the website. So um, yeah, the practical mean, details so in in the way. <laughs> um, let, let's um, let's do that in the next couple of days. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, what I can what we can offer on our side, like we, I mean, I'm I'm willing to do like fifty fifty revenue share from actually running that second day. So whoever sh s signs nice. up for the second day or actually the 3d printer weekend if you're gonna be like instructing that we, we give 50 50 percent net revenue share to instructors so nice be willing to do it so Ooh. so idea if people show up for that then that could pay for itself as well yeah mm -hmm. oh very cool yeah okay so let's, I, let's see I do that. need a I do need a large printer if I'm gonna do this stuff I need a large printer mm -hmm. yeah, yeah <laughs> so uh, the thing like the be yeah up be up be um yeah uh, well that the, one only on that particular one uh you can mm. upgrade it to the larger bed but then you just need we have this uh, fast heated bed that we use that's on 120 volts with PEI 
uh, but that's a little heavy to put on a small machine. So for this one, we're actually using BuildTac because we're keeping it simple and without heated bed. Yeah. Now BuildTac, yeah. I mean, we tried it. It works really well. Uh, have you tried it? Uh, Bill Tack, no, I'm a fan of uh, Jason's um, Jason Perks' stuff. Um, so he's got something called Print Bite, um, which he actually did the materials research series. I mean, he's a real, he's a reclusive, very, very um, um, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 careful, considerate engineer, but seriously reclusive. Um, Print Bite. He, he he did the materials research and so hmm. when you when you heat it as it cools it doesn't shrink but it does in only one direction and so it hmm. pinks the thing off um so but it, it the, it's it's really i don't even know the exact the exact technical details of what and the, the material science that huh. he went to to, to to do it but it's it's um it's very specific stuff Let's see, how much does um, it cost for like a 12 by 12 inch piece of that? Let's see, buy now. 12 by 12, uh, yeah, well, 200 like, by 200. Um, 300 by 300. Just the I, 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 I think, I, I think uh, um, about $25 for, uh, for, uh, for an 8 inch by 8 inch, you know, 200 by 200 millimeter uh, piece or something. Um, he does do the, the 300 by 300. He does actually do them cut to order because he gets it in large, uh, large sheets. Yeah, it's 31 um, pounds. It's... Uh, yeah, for what for the for, for the three hundred by three hundred. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, That's all right. It's, does it's, that work without heat too, or? Uh, yes, yeah, it will. But you mustn't put any stuff on it. If you put any stuff off stuff on it, it actually absorbs into the material. So you mustn't put oils, uh -huh. um, or or um, or things on it. Yeah. Um. So it's to do with the chemical composition of the yeah. of the. Uh, of the uh, material yeah it's a little late in the game i don't think we have time to do that since we yeah, developed yeah, it for but yeah no that's cool um but yeah for, for that printer we just got the build tack uh with a cool. with a, actually a flex plate a spring steel flex plate so it's really cool to pop things off yep uh, but Excellent. yeah that, that was the idea we haven't built that one but i mean it's a simple translation from the current one you put on another z-axis to span the the, the space and then just use a bigger yep. bed. So that's a it's a ready ready add on, and we're going to offer that on the, first, the second day where people can get get that for like minimal increase in price. You get this big decent printer. So I think that should attract a lot of people for that. Yeah, yeah. for doing these kinds of large parts that are needed for these things, yes. Because um, otherwise you've got to construct the thing in sort of like small cubes, and it's like yeah. Oh, gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and twelve, you know, three hundred by three hundred uh, millimeters is still not large, but yeah, this stuff that we're doing, I mean, it's completely scalable. So one of the outcomes is, uh, I was thinking, the next steam camp we do on there's the filament making and the larger printers, because now we're talking about okay, let's do this. And yeah. I actually started uh, designing the high temperature heated bed just simply with fire brick in it mm -hmm. for 178 C max continuous temperature. So. Wow. That's going to come up too in the near future, but sticking to this, yes, let's do the simple product. Get it also published on a website. Once we do the twelve inch, we can start selling that and try to keep going along. Fantastic. Well, just um, one thing I mentioned. One of the things so um, we've, we've been talking on online. I thought mm. um, not needing a large printer mm. or, or at least a thing is is I think is a yeah, a, a one which does all three axes is good. Is um, uh, good. That's why I, I love that um, the uh, the um, continuous fiber idea. Yeah. And yeah. Um, um, so, uh, it, but getting hold of carbon fiber tubes, well, it suddenly occurred to me a couple of days ago when we we're talking about it. You could I, I set up that page, that preliminary page, um, mm -hmm. wrapping wrapping um, Kevlar filament on a cnc machine and doing a cross hat so you go one way with the kevlar wrap it onto the mm -hmm. the kevlar filament onto the, onto the thing then come back again mm. right with the bobbin just let it run thing and do that several times to get a cross hatch on a on a form using the cnc lathe to turn it then put a 3d printer going backwards and forwards putting layers on it and turn it put another line drum, turn it drum, put another line drum, and create a in case that Kevlar twine in 3D printed plastic, 
and then do another layer and you can actually construct yeah. your things yeah and it, totally it's unique the thing is that the technique of which we saw online you pointed me at that um uh, fiber reinforced plastic thing mm. uh website and it had at the bottom it had something about continuous fiber and the process for doing that and the 3d printed design for that looked horribly complicated Mm-hmm. But one of the things, the unique three-dimensional things of doing a CNC version is that the bobbin, uh, with, you know, with making pipes, is that it is uniquely easy to do, mm-hmm. to construct the machine. You just need one one uh, x-axis thing going backwards and forwards while the CNC thing is doing the turning. Yeah. Yeah. Right, zzz, 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 of always, and then this do basically a 3D printer backwards and forwards and a z-axis, so a z-axis and an x-axis up and down on that, and the CNC again turns the thing so you can put the plastic onto a pipe. You can't do that kind of thing with a. It's too complicated to do with a thing. We discussed some ideas about yeah, that with the no, I filament. Think so for filament. everybody watching this, fiber reinforced pipe 3D printer. I mean, yeah, that's not. Sounds very doable with basic open sourceable technology here that's yeah doesn't exist yet no, uh nothing, nothing complicated it. but it's an integration problem it's uh yeah, yeah, yeah marlin could do it right even yeah i don't know yeah 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 um uh, uh, uh you know i i i probably actually do a, a manual uh, program of cre- you know of uh, um uh creating the g-code by hand and then drop it into marlin yeah mm-hmm. um you need one two three four you need four axes mm-hmm. one for the cnc one for the bobbin backwards and forwards one for and two one for the z-axis and one for the 3d printer left and right so it would be a four axis controller mm-hmm. more that's easy <laughs> all right <laughs> okay cool um yeah what else what else uh you want to cover do, do you use keycad as a regular practice in your work he said oh god oh, i think no um, I I tried desperately hard to get on with it, and and because it was free software. Uh, sorry, I just need to plug this phone into a, a battery. Yeah. Um, um, I tried desperately hard to get on with it. So how do you do it now? Um, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, for the complex stuff, I use um, proprietary software. <clears throat> don't tell that Delta. Don't tell nobody. Um, is is Keycad um, just not up to par? You'd say. Or? If you look up. The Olimex 2016 FOSDEM video on doing DDR3 for the uh, Olimex laptop. The they had a nightmare of a time doing the DDR3 layout. It was just ridiculous. It was six months, six months of work. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and um, things have marginally improved since then, but. I spent three hours doing a layout, a DDR3 layout, using Keysat, saved it, opened it up, and it deleted all of it. I went, what the hell? And I got on the forums and went, what the heck's going on? I said, oh, did you happen to forget to set the, um, the, um, the layer settings so that it allowed you to do signals on that layer? And we said, well, um, yes, I did, actually. Oh, we're very sorry. It doesn't warn you. It just deletes them when you save the file. What the hell? That was in KiCad? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So there, it is just not ready for Prime. I've had seg faults. I've had um, library parts being corrupted. Um, but sadly, on trying to interact with the with the um, developers to get them fixed, they've just gone, oh, that's not a problem. We close the bug report. It's like, I, I just, yeah. Um, it, 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 so it's just DRAM not, chips? I'm, I'm Googling up what DDR3 is. Yeah. Uh, uh, double data write re- uh, memory. Mm-hmm. Um, 800 megahertz uh, signals, um, uh, stuff like that. So you need very, very accurate tracks, um, uh, power tracks, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you haven't got that, it just just doesn't work. But once again, um, like I mean, you're talking about some sophisticated designs, but for everyday yes. stuff, <laughs> yeah, exa- is, exactly. Is so for everyday everyday stuff, Keysad fine, EagleCAD fine, um, GNU, GNU EDA fine, no problem. Um, but 
um, for the really sophisticated stuff like you know computers like an Intel uh, processor and um, uh, a one gigahertz or two gigahertz ARM processor, no. Right, right, right. <laughs> so that's one of those things. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, bless you. I'm down to six percent battery, so it's gonna. This is gonna five. This is gonna. We've got about. <laughs> Okay. Two minutes before this okay. thing. So right, I'm cool. very sorry. Uh, this is great to talk to you. Um, so what? What next? What? What else do you want to cover in two minutes? Uh, anything else? Uh, the battery. The battery pack. Oh yeah. I've, so I've, I've 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 published a source code um, on on the thing for that in the Git repository and um, put it in the page and put a YouTube video explaining about it. You can okay. find it open source battery pack on the um, on the uh, open source ecology ecology page. Nice. How'd you find uh, our? How how'd you? What motivated you to join the wiki and actually, you know, uh, establish contact at this particular time? The work um, on the car. Uh, I've been I've been I've been aware of you quite some time, but it's just um uh, 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 it was the fact that the car was missing. All of the websites for the for cars, uh, the links are um are dead. So I wanted to reach out to you to put the car on that. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> that's good. That's good. I'm glad we met. So yeah. And it's turned into a lot more than that. Uh, but hey, it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's keep in, in touch. We'll we'll uh, keep yeah. continue the discussion on the internet. And yeah, cool. great to meet you, man. I'm <laughs> glad you're doing the work you're doing. I mean, Libre Silicon, because we can't have like we say the prerequisite to a democratic society is yeah open source down to the chips. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. absolutely. So we both believe it. That's why we connect <laughs> on that. Yeah, that's awesome. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, so we'll talk soon and we'll continue yeah. the discussion. Have a really good. All right. Thanks a lot. Cool. Bye bye. Bye.